If you had to pick one country as your favorite travel destination out of all the places you have ever been to, which country would it be? This place here is where I was born and lived for the first six years of my life. It is not just another travel destination for me. This is my second home. It is the land of magnificent landscapes, abundant wildlife, vibrant cities, rich culture and history, including some of the most inspirational leaders in the world, and of course, delicious food. This is South Africa. My name is Matt and together with my wife, we explored the province of Mpumalanga for one week. We concentrated mainly on safari in the world famous Kruger National Park and the landscapes in and around the Blyde River Canyon Nature Reserve. In this video I'm going to show you some of my favorite spots and give you some tips to make the most out of your experience. One of the main hotspots in this region is the Blyde River Canyon and the surrounding waterfalls. The Lone Creek Fall is one of our favorites. A very important thing to note is that all the waterfalls in this region are most impressive around December and January, when they carry lots of water because rainfalls occur more frequently in summer. During the winter months these waterfalls can be less spectacular. This is especially the case for the Bridal Veil Falls thin layer of mist creating a beautiful veil. The early bird might catch the fall perfectly lit in the morning sun on a clear day. South Africa is not always sunny and this region in particular can be very foggy. We were extremely lucky when we visited one of my all-time favorite spots, the Pinnacle. It was a foggy morning and we weren't sure if we were going to see anything at all. But the fog started to dissolve just as we arrived, creating a beautiful dramatic scenery. Many people confuse this place with God's Window. I personally think God's Window is far less impressive than the Pinnacle, which is why we skipped that spot entirely this time. The perfect home base to explore this region is Hrasko. We stayed at the Mogodi Lodge, with some of the main attractions right in front of your doorstep. One being the lift providing an easy access to the bottom of the gorge. Too boring for you? Then how about the big swing? Or just grab a coffee and watch others doing the magic. There is something for everybody. A nice place to cool down are the Macmac pools, although it can get crowded quite quickly. The Macmac Falls, on the other hand, are beautiful and you can get a perfect shot from above. But we didn't like the fenced-in platform. This spot doesn't let you explore the area, like the other waterfalls mentioned before. The next three locations plus the pinnacle can be combined perfectly in a day trip. Let's start with Berg's Luck Potholes. This beautiful spot looks out of this world. Easy access and nice bridges offer you a perfect vantage point to get a glimpse into the canyon. If you want to avoid the masses, get up early. The next spot is a must. The view of the canyon and the three rondavels will blow your mind. Take some time for the third biggest canyon in the world and possibly the most beautiful one. In most of these spots you will find some curio shops, which offer a good possibility to support local crafts and communities. The next spot is about food, one of my favorite restaurants in the world. The potluck Boscombeis Bush Kitchen. Surrounded by nothing but nature, located next to a beautiful river. It helps to have a four-wheel drive to get there. This place has no electricity and food is prepared over the open fire. Authentic African kitchen. There are plenty of hiking trails and more waterfalls to explore in this area. But since we only spent two days here, we didn't visit any further spots. The next morning we got up super early and entered the Kruger National Park at the Pabeni Gate. The Kruger National Park is the biggest game reserve in South Africa and protects a rich variety of animals, birds and plants. Some people call this park the best place on earth, for a good reason. 
Unlike other national parks, this one can easily be explored with your own car, even without a four-wheel drive. And the entrance fee is very affordable in comparison to other protected areas in Africa. Guests have a good choice of different camps inside the park. The camps are like little towns with restaurants, shops and cozy accommodation options for every budget. Each camp has its own unique charm. The restaurants mostly offer a good view, perfect to relax and watch out for wildlife. The atmosphere is so peaceful that you could easily stay in the camps for days without ever leaving them. The Krugel Park hosts many different eco-zones over a stretch of 380 kilometers and therefore plant, animal and bird life varies from south to north. If you have enough time, it is definitely worth exploring the Kruger Park from top to bottom, in its entirety. If your time is limited, I would stick to the south, with a higher density of wildlife than the north. Lower Sabi and Skukuza are two of my favorite camps. Availability needs to be checked early and bookings have to be made quite some time in advance, depending on your accommodation preferences. If you want to explore the park, enjoy a variety of wildlife sightings and take part in some of the different activities offered, you should at least stay for a week. Some of my favorite activities are field walks and night drives. Field walks let you explore the wilderness safely on foot, accompanied by experienced field guides. The walks are perfect to discover the little things in nature, and if you are lucky, you can encounter big game on foot. An incredible feeling mixed with excitement and adrenaline. Since we have family just outside of Kruger Park, we did our own field walks on an adjacent farm this time. I've been on so many field walks, there are not many animals left I haven't encountered on foot. Night drives give you the chance to see some of the nocturnal animals, since self-driving in the park is not permitted during night. The Kruger Park is not a zoo. You have to be patient if you want to see animals and be aware of your surroundings, listen to the sounds of nature, scanning the area and also knowing what to look for. If you buy the Kruger map at any of the entrance gates or shops in the park, you will get a minimum base of knowledge. If you have no clue whatsoever, your best chance of seeing elusive animals is stopping where other cars have stopped and ask them what they have spotted. It also helps if you put on animal masks so that other animals don't recognize you. Just kidding, if you do this people will think you're nuts. Most likely you won't get the shots as you know them from planet Earth and National Geographic. If you get lucky enough to see a leopard for example, this is how you will most likely see it, for a blink of an eye and always, I promise, always hiding their face behind some branches so you can't get the perfect shot. But sometimes you're just at the right spot at the right time. This time we stopped on a bridge where a few other visitors had spotted two rhinos. As always, I started to scan the surrounding to see if there was anything else and discovered two cheetahs in the background. A super rare sight. Hello, hello for Bailey. Bailey, yes. I got so overexcited and wanted to tell everyone around us that I started to misrecord. You see the two cheetahs? Yeah. On top of that. Luckily, I realized in time and still got some good shots. Your best chances for special sightings are in the early morning and at sunset, just before the camp gates close. Getting up early pays off, because even shy animals will often use the road as their path in the early morning. Getting back before the gates close in the evening also pays off, because the closing times are strict and you might get a heavy fine for being too late. Respecting nature and the park rules is of highest priority. For insider tips, just talk to other visitors in the camps. Many of them are South Africans possibly some of the friendliest and most inviting people in the world. They will love to share their knowledge and stories with you. I hope you like this clip, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. 
see you next time and stay awesome.